Thank you very much. The next speaker is Harriet Rhodes, and if you wonder why the roadkill disappears on the road, she will have the answer. So Harriet, please. Hello, my name is Harriet Rhodes, and I am presenting to you my research entitled A Global Assessment of the Potential Impact of Scavengers in Roadkill Persistence. So a bit of background on the topic, roads can have a massive impact on surrounding wildlife, such as through the impact of collisions with vehicles, which are responsible for roughly 7% of mammal mortality and 1% of bird mortality. So it's important to get accurate estimates of the number of wildlife vehicle collisions in order to mitigate these issues in hotspots. So it can be hard to make these estimates. So one reason is persistence time of the animal carcass, so how long it remains on the road for. And scavenger species, such as vultures and foxes and crows, can often remove the carcasses before they are counted in surveys, causing underestimates of roadkill counts. So these scavenger species can also be at risk of collision themselves when they're feeding on the roads, which puts not only the species, but the ecosystem services they provide at risk. So with this study, I am providing a global assessment of the co-occurrence of high road density and a high number of scavenger species that are known to feed on roadkill. So with this, I aim to identify areas where the species will be having a larger effect on persistence time. So this will also highlight areas of mitigation. I also aim to highlight gaps in the literature and gaps in research. So moving on to my methodology, I collated a list of species that are known to feed on roadkill. So I did this by first conducting a literature review, looking for peer-reviewed articles that name species that had been observed feeding on or removing roadkill. Uh, I then conducted a questionnaire, which was sent out to road ecologists, asking them to name species. So as of yet, I have a total list of 69 species, and I use their geographical ranges to produce a bivariate map detailing the co-occurrence of road density and species richness of the scavenger species. So this is the map that I was able to produce. So the red details areas where there is a high amount of scavenger species that feed on roadkill and a high number of roads. And the blue shows areas where there is a low amount of both and the green areas showing intermediate values. So we found that areas in mainland Europe have the most co-occurrence of roads and scavengers and areas like Greenland and Austria, South America and Africa have low co-occurrence. So this is expected as Europe is a very populated area with a generally high road density. So this means that there's many roads and many scavenger species potentially feeding on these roads. It's therefore likely that the scavengers are removing a lot of the roadkill in these areas and they're being missed in surveys, causing underestimates of roadkill counts uh, in the red areas. I therefore suggest that researchers pay particularly close attention to this factor in their estimation in these areas. So there's also a lot of variation on slightly more local levels. So if you look closely at the UK, for example, there are areas that are green, but also areas that are yellow and orange. So this more local variation suggests it's important that all studies estimating roadkill counts conduct persistence tests and evaluate the impact of scavenger species as it can change on quite a fine scale. So these areas of high co-occurrence are also priority areas for mitigation. So species feeding on the road can be at risk of being in collisions themselves. So therefore in high co-occurrence areas, there will be more scavenger species dying. So these species can provide several ecosystem services, such as stabilizing, stabilizing trophic webs and nutrient cycling. Uh, it's therefore important that these species survival is not put at risk. So mitigation strategies uh, that could be put in place include removing the carrion from the roads and setting up feeding stations for the scavengers nearby. So this still allows the scavengers access to the food, but in a less risky environment, so this study also highlights gaps in the literature and in research. So there were significantly more articles and responses to the survey in Europe, representing an observation bias. So this, this may be affecting the results of the study with areas of low co-occurrence, potentially representing areas with limited research. There's also a lack of research into this topic generally. 
So of the 526 papers first analysed, only 19 papers specifically named species feeding on roadkill. So therefore, we call for more global studies on scavengers that feed on the road to be conducted. So this is still a ongoing investigation. I hope to be able to get more accounts of species feeding on roadkill to increase the number of species on my list and get a more global representation. So if you'd like to provide any info, I've attached the link to this presentation and also you can email me. So this would hopefully increase the accuracy of the map. So with a higher number of species, we'll also hopefully be able to produce a map just containing threatened species. So therefore detailing areas where threatened species are more likely to be involved in collision. And this would be uh, priority areas for mitigation. So with the map I have currently produced, you also can't differentiate intermediate values. So like where there is a high number of scavengers and low number of roads and vice versa. Therefore, we plan to extend this project and include a bimodal map that better details this and would show priority conservation areas. So that concludes my presentation. Thank you for your time and please feel free to ask me any questions. Thanks. Thank you very much, Harriet. Really interesting to see that, uh, that you're looking at the, at the scavengers. Um, I have a number of questions, but I can contact you later on. Are there questions in the audience? And online? Yeah. Not so far. Then maybe I can, I can ask a question, and that's concerning uh, not the scavengers, but the road maintenance crews. They're not scavenging in the same way, of course, but they also lead to a re reduction or a removal of these animals, the carcasses along roads. Uh, wouldn't it be interesting to get an idea of how often these road maintenance crews are active and, and how often they would encounter carcasses and clean them off the road? Um, yes, I think that's definitely interesting. Um, I think there's a, because the maintenance crews are going to also be able to um, uh, potentially move the carcasses to the side of the road um, because scavengers have more access as well. So not getting rid of them, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, like providing a feeding station. And so I think it would definitely be interesting to see how frequently that happens. Okay, thank you. I uh, got online a question by Wendy. She's asking, what selection process did you use for consulting road ecologists about scavengers? Um, so uh, my supervisor sent it out to um, a list of the groups. I sent it out to um, the mailing list of different um, uh, infrastructure and groups, IENA and then also the transport working group of the Connectivity Conservation Specialist Group of the IUCN. And then we asked them if they'd specifically seen um, scavengers feeding on roadkill and asked them to name the species that they'd seen, um, the species it was feeding on and where they'd seen it and then asked them to attach pictures if they could so we could help um, identify it as well. Okay, thank you very much.